Thank you very much, Chris. Good morning. Uh, my name is Gary Blenner. Uh, as Chris said, I teach U.S. History and American Government at Rio Maracano High School. And I'm here today to stand as a candidate for the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors, District 4. Ever since the housing bubble in California began to burst in 2006, the Sacramento area economy has been in a downward spiral ever since. People have ended up losing their homes, their jobs, and their livelihood. In 2007, the top 1% of all income earners in the United States made just 25% of all income. That is more than the bottom 50% of wage earners. One percent here, fifty percent there, but for the top wealthy that is apparently not enough. The percentage of income going to the top one percent nearly tripled in the 1970s. All over this country people are angry and frustrated. It is true all over America, especially here in Sacramento County, but one of the reasons people are angry and frustrated is they are working incredibly hard. In Sacramento there are people who don't work one job or two jobs in some cases, they're working three and four jobs trying to cobble together a meager income and living just in order to support their families. While people are working harder and harder, in, in many cases, their income is going down. The fact is 80% of all new income earned from 1980 to 2005 has gone to the top 1%. It explains why the American people are feeling angry as they should be. They are working hard, but they're not going anyplace. In some cases, as in the case of the poor and the elderly, their standard of living has actually gone down. The question we have to ask ourselves here today is what do we expect from our elected officials? And I maintain the argument that while governing includes choosing and prioritizing, it is clear from the record that our opponents, Roberta McGlashan and Susan Peters, have chosen to support the interests of the top 1%. They have chosen to uphold the needs of greedy corporate developers and other wealthy interests in the Sacramento area above and beyond those to defend the people that they were sworn to support. They have voted to cut back public services to the poor, the elderly, and the disabled, while continuing to divert millions of dollars of unnecessary construction projects that line the pocket of these greedy developers. That is why I say enough is enough. It is time for a change of direction on the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors. One of the things I'd like to accomplish is to make government more accountable to the 99%. That is why my running mate, Jeff Kravitz, and myself intend to embark on a series of 99% town hall meetings over the next few months to listen to the needs of the people of our districts and ask them what public services they want to see restored and what they want to see done on their behalf. I believe, for example, that the $98,000 salary that the Board of Supervisors make for themselves is way too much and the time of amount and energy that they that they put forward is energy that is wasted change will only come about if we the 99 percent begin at the grassroots level and begin to stand up for ourselves it's more than necessary to just occupy wall street or the banks or parks the next stage has to be to occupy the government i'm running for office not to punish success as some people say but to punish excess it's time for the people to stand up for themselves. If we all pull together, there will be a brighter tomorrow for Sacramento's future. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Jeff Kravitz, and I think that uh, some people in the area may have known that I've been involved in defending the rights of the Occupy uh, movement in Sacramento, uh, which is a good example, the way the government reacted to it, of the way that this government in Sacramento and throughout the United States wastes taxpayer money on unnecessary prosecutions. I'd have to congratulate Jan Scully that she so far did not go along with that prosecution. So right now in this county we are faced with all sorts of dilemmas and we are faced with the one of the part of the problem is that we have a leadership that is essentially identical year after year after yes. year after year. If you look back for the last few elections, many of the Board of Supervisors have been re-elected because they weren't even yeah. challenged. And yet it's local government that has the most direct effect on people's everyday lives. 
Right now, in this county and in this state and in this whole country, we need creative leadership to work directly with the people of this county, with the small business owners throughout the third district where you see commercial property after commercial property that is shut down, that can't be rented out, and we have a county board of supervisors that is constantly interested in new developments. Each one of these new developments is cannibalizing the ability of the people who already own property to go forward and make profit off of their, their businesses. Nothing wrong with profit, nothing wrong with economic growth. But that growth has to be channeled towards the people in this community who are living here. Instead, we have a government that seems to be obsessed with large developers, large corporations, which have absolutely nothing to do with this county. We want to bring the people into the county. As Gary just said, one of the ideas we're proposing is that the Board of Supervisors meet at night, make the job like it is in many other counties and so forth, a, a, essentially a part-time job. The salaries would be less, but the meetings would be more open. There would be more community involvement. Just this week, the Board of Supervisors has apparently voted to spend a million dollars in funds that they're going to receive, money that could go to the general fund, to make the, the council chambers nicer. The council chambers are usually empty. People don't even know what's going on at, at the votes that are happening there, and they're going to spend more money on that. We have to look into all of these issues, and every decision has to be made as to how it affects the vast majority of people who are living in this county. What we need is a local government that it understands what this community is all about, hears public services and all, sort, all programs towards developing the small business infrastructure of this county, and that's what we're going to do when we are elected this year. Thanks.